Musculoskeletal Physiotherapy Introduction to the module This module looks at musculoskeletal physiotherapy, MSK, principles and why it remains one of the most prominent areas of physiotherapy, along with the known disorders and therapy techniques. Topics to be covered What is musculoskeletal therapy, MSK? Skeletal muscle structure Common musculoskeletal disorders some of the therapy techniques for musculoskeletal problems. What is musculoskeletal therapy, MSK? In medical terminology, the word musculoskeletal is the collective description of the body's structure of bones, joints, muscles, tendons, ligaments, nerves, and spinal components. With this in mind, musculoskeletal physiotherapy is the specialized treatment offered to clients that experience pain injuries, or restrictions in these areas. It is the most prominent form of physiotherapy worldwide in terms of clients and practices. This is partly because MSK therapy can be applied to such a wide range of disciplines, such as orthopedics, massage, and alternative therapies. MSK physiotherapy treatment typically involves physical contact, manual manipulation, and scheduled exercise. It requires a good level of anatomic, physiologic, and pathologic knowledge. Skeletal muscle structure. All myocytes, muscle cells or fibers, are covered in a thin membrane of tissue called the endomysium. Additionally, any group of collected muscle fibers, fascicles, are contained within a sheath of connective tissue named the paramysium. This is all complemented by the epimysium, the elastic tissue surrounding the whole muscle. Due to these connective materials and the fibrous structures that adhere them to bones and other components, all muscles are completely harnessed in place and control movements. They can only be displaced by trauma or overloading. This muscular tissue is continuously connected with associated fibrous tissue situated in the muscle and is more readily recognized as a tendon, driving the skeletal parts to provide the body's movements. Tendons are connected to bones via the periosteum, which is the vascular connective tissue that covers it. Additionally, muscles can interact with other muscles and large areas via connecting tissues called aponeurosis, which is white and fibrous and works with flat muscles. Tendons and aponeuroses are extremely strong, and muscles or bones can be damaged before they are torn in an accident. However, they can occasionally pull away from the skeleton during stress or impact. Skeletal muscle structure. All myocytes, muscle cells or fibers, are covered in a thin membrane of tissue called the endomysium. Additionally, any group of collected muscle fibers, fascicles, are contained within a sheath of connective tissue named the paramysium. This is all complemented by the epimysium, the elastic tissue surrounding the whole muscle. Due to these connective materials and the fibrous structures that adhere them to bones and other components, all muscles are completely harnessed in place and control movements. They can only be displaced by trauma or overloading. There are six distinctive shapes for muscles that are classified by medicine and therapy. These are 1. Parallel muscles, strap-like, they have parallel fascicles and are seen as the typical muscle type. Two. Convergent muscles, fan-like as the fascicles, spray out from a central point and attach to a wide area. 3. Pennant muscles, feather-like in appearance and often set at a slant to other components. 4. Fusiform muscles, spindle-shaped, with the muscle narrowing to tendons at the tips. 5. Spiral muscles, identified as having fibers that twist between the source and the connection. 6. Circular muscles, also known as sphincter muscles, these are smooth caps to tubes and openings, preventing uncontrolled movement of materials. Common musculoskeletal disorders Disorders in the cervical spine The C-spine, cervical, is the collective term for the upper part of the vertebral column and consists of the seven vertebrae that primarily supports the skull. The named first two vertebrae are called the axis and atlas. Unlike some other spinal components, they are not separated by a disc but are connected by a ligament network. Common conditions associated with the C-spine are Myofacial, mechanical, 
neck pain, aggravated by neck movements, this is generally manifested as severe pain in the shoulders and upper arms. It can be sometimes accompanied by headaches localized to the front area of the cranium. Cervical spondylosis, this is a collective term for common joint pain in the spine that often results simply from old age or wear and tear as the spinal components start to dehydrate or shrink. It is typically separated into three clinical classifications, spondylosis with joint pain, spondylosis with cervical radiculopathy, and spondylosis with cervical myelopathy. Whiplash-associated disorder, WAD, almost solely linked with car accidents where impacts cause sudden and extreme neck movements. Clients report headaches and neck pains, similar to mechanical neck pain symptoms, and generally, there is no neurological damage. Disorders in the shoulder. The shoulder joint consists of a ball and socket structure which enables a good ROM range of motions. However, this can also make it susceptible to some common disorders. Rotator cuff pathology. The rotator cuff is the collection of muscles and tendons around the joints, which can degenerate with age or injury. The acromioclavicular AC, joint pathology. Trauma or a fall can cause injury to the upper joint in the shoulder and cause severe and consistent pain. Shoulder instability, the structures surrounding the joint do not adequately support it due to injury, age, or conditions. So, the joint may become dislocated or slide out of place partially. Disorders in the elbow. The hinges in an elbow joint allow for highly flexible movements but specific injuries and disorders can make it susceptible to pain. Lateral epicondylitis, this is more popularly known as tennis elbow, and putting any kind of pressure or resistance on the arm can produce extreme pain and discomfort. Medial epicondylitis, sometimes called golfer's elbow, this results from tendons becoming inflamed and swollen after injury or intense use of the arm. Ulnar nerve entrapment, a major nerve in the arm can become compressed or irritated by repeated movement in the arm. This is often located at the elbow joint and is sometimes called cubital tunnel syndrome. Disorders in the hip. The hip also contains a flexible ball and socket joint, where the femoral head, thigh bone, interacts with the acetabulum, hip bone. This also allows for a wide ROM and can be susceptible to pain and injury. Posterior hip pain, injuries or conditions affecting the lower back or pelvis may lead to intense pain and restrictions in the lumbar spine area. Lateral hip pain, a recognized condition known as greater trochanteric bursitis, which causes the bursa, a fluid sac that cushions joints, to swell and inflame, can often cause this localized pain. Some of the therapy techniques for musculoskeletal problems. Muscle energy techniques, MET. MET is a popular form of manual therapy that a physiotherapist typically uses during a program. It works on the premise that continued manipulation of muscles and joints lead to an extension of the elasticity limits of the membranes and tissues. Forms of this technique include reciprocal inhibition, this is merely the controlled contraction of a muscle, whilst its opposing muscle is allowed to relax. For example, the biceps are contracted as the triceps are permitted to rest during therapy and stretching exercises simultaneously. Post-isometric relaxation, the effect and aftermath of stretching a muscle to its limit and allowing a subsequent rest period on a scheduled basis. Mulligan. This technique is named after Brian Mulligan, a New Zealand physiotherapist who pioneered the procedure. The basic concept is that the physiotherapist applies glides, joint mobilization techniques where controlled force can align bones, increasing mobility of joints and alleviating pain. This invariably consists of two principal practices. Sustained natural apophyseal glides, SNAG pain-free manual therapy where the client moves in symptomatic ways to assist the therapist. Mobilization with movement, MWM physiological exercise, stretching, shaking, etc., is used to promote natural healing and pain-free therapy. Mulligan techniques can be performed alongside other treatments and can even be performed at home by the client themselves. Myofascial therapy. Myofascia. 
The connective tissue system that separates muscles, can stick to other human tissues following injuries or inflammation, leading to muscle pain and movement restriction. The American physician, Dr. Janet Graham Travel, pioneered myofascial therapy practices and promoted the idea of trigger points. This involves a physiotherapist applying some considerable manual force to afflicted areas of the body where the pain is centered. This often provides the material for popular media, where a physical therapist is seen to drive their elbows or hands deep into their client's skin to prompt pain relief. Pilates Named after a German physical educator, Joseph Hubertus Pilates, this is primarily a form of physical fitness that can be practiced at home once the client has been taught the positions. It can provide excellent supplementary benefits to more traditional physiotherapy techniques without compromising their effects. The technique basically consists of a series of postures and controlled movements to be practiced on an exercise mat whilst in sportswear. It can also consist of breathing exercises to deliver extra oxygen to working tissues. Modern physiotherapists often train in pilot's techniques to teach their clients. Exercise therapy. Regular and planned exercise is one of the most basic and most accessible forms of physiotherapy treatment that can be applied. Physiotherapists mainly recommend and support clients in their efforts to incorporate therapeutic exercise into their everyday routines. It remains one of the most common and effective forms of treatments used in healthcare. Like Pilates treatments, it also gives the client a sense of independence, control, and responsibility for their treatment and rehabilitation, which can often be psychologically important to their personal recovery. The therapeutic exercise was explored to a greater depth in Module 3 of this course. Summary This module has covered the following points. Musculoskeletal physiotherapy deals with the conditions that target muscles, bones, and surrounding tissues. The disciplines needed by a physiotherapist in this field include an acute knowledge of anatomy, physiology, and pathology. The skeletal muscles mainly consist mainly of connective tissues along with muscle mass and components. There are six main muscle shapes classified in the human body and designed for specific uses. The shoulders and hips consist of ball and socket joints allowing an impressive range of motion, ROM.